Hi there, this is Paco. I'd like to show you how to use uh, BFD2 uh, with Reaper. As you're aware of, you know, if you've try, ever tried using BFD with, uh, with Reaper, um, I've managed to be able to record uh, uh, individual tracks. As you see here, you can get your individual tracks for each instruments by selecting the 32 out VST when you load the instrument into Reaper. However, uh, without some major fiddling around, you'd have to add three stereo tracks to cover the overhead mics. Otherwise, all of your kit pieces would be dry. Like your snare and your toms and all that would be dry. And without the uh, overhead mics being recorded, you couldn't get it wet. This created all kinds of problems, especially when you tried to mix your drums especially if a hi-hat was missing highs. If you tried to increase the highs on the overhead to give their hi-hats a bit more tinny sound, it would, uh, of course, add highs to all of your kit pieces. So I have managed to find a way to record all of the kit pieces uh, wet and individually with their own overhead mics. Okay, the first thing to do um, is load the VST for 32 out come over here to your FX sense and click on it now you'll notice on my my kit I have three faders for my kick and three faders for my snare I have one for the hi-hat one for the low tom medium tom high tom um, one symbol two symbol and my ride they're individual channels now what you want to do is you want to go up to the auxiliary button here and you want to add in this case I have nine kit pieces as you can see I have nine pieces so add nine auxiliary channels and that's what I've done here I've added nine channels now underneath each channel select a mono channel to match the auxiliary channel so mono 1 would be auxiliary 1, mono 2 would be auxiliary 2, mono 3 would be auxiliary 3, and so forth. So as you can see, mono 9 is auxiliary 9. Then what you want to do is you want to go and you want to click on one of these boxes here, and what that does is it comes over here to where it says send. And you want to turn it on, you want to select post fader, you want to select main, and then you want to select the corresponding auxiliary channel which is now available. Now this, the, the two here in the send is not available and you won't see the auxiliary channels unless you create the auxiliary channels first. You must create the auxiliary channels first. So you create those channels. So the three uh, kick faders I have being sent to auxiliary one. As you can see, auxiliary one. My snare also has three faders. They're going to auxiliary two. And of course, auxiliary two is mono two. If we look at auxiliary two, it's mono two. Auxiliary three, mono three. Okay, so all of my kit pieces are being sent. So my hi hat, if we click on my hi hat, you can see it's being sent to on, post fader, main, and it's going to auxiliary 3 because that's where auxiliary 3 is and mono 3 so you set them up accordingly so that all of your auxiliaries are on and being sent to their corresponding channel in doing it this way what you're effectively doing is you're sending all of your kit pieces to an auxiliary channel which is set to mono and bypassing the overhead mics okay now once you have that done come over here to the right hand side where it says mic okay and you'll see the master bleed in this area right here 
and there are three round buttons. Turn all these buttons to the left until they're, they're at zero. They read zero. All three of them. Okay. And up top here, the overhead mic distances. You want to set those to zero as well. Okay. Now we'll go over to the kit page. Go through each kit piece and make sure it is centered. That's that little button here. Kit piece, pan. That the pans are centered. Okay. Now as I mentioned before, the overhead mics are disabled here because you're bypassing the, over, the overhead uh, mic room and ambient here. You're bypassing it here. This is global because it affects each kit piece. Now over here is where you have control over your um, overhead mics. So, <coughs> excuse me, each kit piece has its own overhead room and ambient mic. So you select the appropriate auxiliary channel for each kit piece. Now these auxiliary channels will not show up here unless you create the auxiliary channels first. So just be aware of that. So obviously my hi-hats are going to be auxiliary 3 because if we go back here and we look at my hi-hats, my hi-hats is set to auxiliary 3 which is mono 3 which I'll get to later but the auxiliary 3. So you just match them up the way you did here in, in the kit, uh, in, in the mixer window. All your kit pieces have their own auxiliary channel. You want to make sure that that gets matched up here for each kit piece. So the snare's on auxiliary 2, the kick's on auxiliary 1, the high tom, auxiliary 6, the medium tom, auxiliary 5, the low tom, auxiliary 4, and so forth. Okay. Now the only kit piece that you will have to make any type of an adjustment to on the overhead sends is most likely the snare drum. All the other kit pieces, their overhead and the room and the ambient mic in this section here, they sound just fine, just default. So you don't have to really mess with that. But like I said, if you want to, it's there for you to adjust it. And when you make an adjustment here, let's say for the snare drum, it will not affect any other instrument other than the snare drum. So if you go over to the tom and you adjust the tom, it's not it's it's not going to be global it will only affect the tom okay so now that you've got that uh, squared away you want to save your kit and then save your groove okay but you you really want to save your kit so that the next time that you load um, uh, you also want to save it uh, as well in uh, Reaper but you want to save that kit in case you want to bring the kit back up and make a change to it. It's available to you. Okay, now we're going to move over to setting up uh, the channels in uh, in uh, in Reaper. Now, when you uh, when you add an instrument track, you'll get this window here, and you'll get this track up here. Okay, and you want to select uh, for its input for the BFD2 here as input MIDI, all MIDI inputs and all channels. Okay, that's input MIDI all input, all MIDI inputs, all channels. Okay. Now, you want to add nine tracks, audio tracks, and you want to select uh, for each individual track. Now this is where the mono comes in. If we go over here to the mono out, let me just move this over here. This little icon here brings up this little window here. Now, in the 32 out VST you have eight stereo channels and this shows the channel number the associated channel number with those channels this black dot here now we're not recording in stereo we're recording mono for each of our drum kit pieces so it, it, the mono uh, channels start right here Let's see is that the one there no it's this one here okay BFD2 mono 1 starts at channel 17 and then channel 18 for mono 2, 19 for 3 and so forth all the way down the list but you can find it out right here by clicking on that 32 out button okay so for the kick drum we go to the input output and right here where it says audio you click on the mono source and you click 17 
because mono one starts at channel 17. This is where you select your channels. Okay? So the snare would be next in line, right? Would be audio 18, would be mono source channel 18. Okay? So it would the it just you just click on each uh, input output and select the corresponding number for your mono source. So the channel number for your hi-hats would be channel 19. Okay, and each channel uh, for its uh, input right here, input mono analog left. Okay, and it, every channel is the same. And for its output, you want to record the output and record output mono. And that goes for every single channel. Okay, so you record the output. Record output, record output mono. And for the IO, which is right here, okay, you want to select the corresponding output, the channel number for the corresponding mono channel. And those are found here, right there. You can see them, they're all listed. And it shows the corresponding channel number. And it's in the output where you select it, right there. Okay, so it's a, it's a fairly simple once you get the hang of it. Uh, so the input output, you select it and then you select 17 for mono 1, 18 for mono 2, 19 for mono 3, and so forth. You know, So if you can count to 10, you can figure this out. It's not rocket science. Okay, and uh, once you have that set up, um, then arm your, your, your tracks, okay? And then come up here and save your project. Okay, and then when you and then when you go to hit record, when it ends up happening is is that you end up with all of your tracks, your kick, your snare, your hi hats, low tom, mid tom, high tom, cymbal one, cymbal two, and your ride, all of them are recorded individually and wet, all at the same time in a single pass. So it's just a matter of. You know, uh, w once you've got your kit figured out and, you, and you've got your groove set up and you really like it and you're ready to record your drums, you load this up, you load your groove, and hit record. And that's about it. You may have to adjust your volumes. But I, I suggest that you adjust your volumes in here. Make sure that they're not, um, you know, make sure you're not getting any uh, red spikes on any of the meters here. And uh, I found that... Uh, if I'm not getting any red spikes in here at all, I'm not getting any, any here. As you can see, they're all at zero. Oh, except for one here. I had to knock a cymbal down a little tiny bit. But uh, that's it. So I hope this, uh, this uh, video helps you out. And it's been Paco talking to you. Have a good day. See ya. Bye-bye.